Hey everyone, Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. This video is going to be about uh, McLaurin series expansion. So, just a little disclaimer, if you haven't uh, passed Calculus 2 or second year Calculus in university, this might be a little bit uh, foreign to you and then in that case you probably shouldn't be here. But uh, if you have passed Calculus in second year university, you should know uh, your Taylor and your McLaurin series. So I'm not going to go into too much detail here. This is a, a third year kind of a use of the McLaurin series where we use the series to approximate a number using a, a table in a, in a similar way that a computer system would do it. So that, and, I, and for us it was a course called numerical analysis. So that's probably why you're here. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so what do we have here? We have a question that asks us to find the McLaurin series for a root one plus X and to estimate root 1.05 with three significant digits. Okay, so that uh, sounds pretty straightforward. I've gone ahead and written a couple formulas below. So we have epsilon S, that's gonna be uh, what we call our stopping criterion. Okay, so essentially, and oh, well, I'll just explain the formula below. That is the uh, general Taylor series expansion. Okay, so that's the Taylor series expansion. That's uh, essentially how calculators and computer systems evaluate numbers. And uh, the more we go through the Taylor series, the more terms that we have, the more accurate, okay, uh, the number that we get is going to be. So the closer to the true number. And uh, that's kind of uh, how the stopping criteria comes into play here, okay, is we're not going to keep going forever. We're going to go as far as the, the question asks us to. And the question is only asking us to go to three significant figures, okay. So uh, that is going to be our n, and I'm just going to go ahead and evaluate that first. Okay, so we have epsilon s, and that's equal to 0 0.5, okay, times 10 to the 2 minus 3 percent. Okay, so our epsilon s is going to be equal to, that is going to equal 0 0.05 percent. Okay, so that's how we get close to that value. Down here, it'll make more sense later when we do it. That's when we're going to stop. So, uh, the first step uh, when we're evaluating our McLaurin and uh, the difference between this Taylor series expansion and McLaurin, uh, as you should know, is when A is equal to zero. That's the, the only difference, okay? So, we are going to just come down here. We're going to rewrite our initial function, f of x. Okay, f of x is equal to, what do we have? We have root 1 plus x. And we're going to write our A value because it's a McLaurin, A is equal to zero, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and just write out the derivatives of f of x in order, okay? And um, since we don't know at this point how, uh, when we're going to have to stop filling out our table, we're just gonna fill out a number of derivatives here and, you know, just so that we don't have to come back and do it later. So we're gonna fill out uh, three derivatives here and hopefully that'll be enough for us and I'll explain how that works in a second. Okay, so I'm not going to go through the derivatives, I'm just going to write them out. At this point, you should kind of know what, how to take basic derivatives. Okay, so those are the three derivatives there. We're going to just go ahead and stop. And on the other side, right beside it, okay, we're going to plug in zero for x, okay, because if you take a look at the Taylor series expansion here, okay, we have f prime of a, we have f double prime of a. So it's, what it's asking us to do is evaluate the f and its derivatives uh, at point a. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, perfect. So we have those three values there. Okay, and now let's go ahead and start plugging those values into our Taylor series expansion here. Okay, so the first term is f of a, which is going to be f of zero. Okay, that is just going to be equal to one. Perfect. And we have a, the next term is going to be f prime of a times x minus a. f prime of a is one half. Okay, and then we have just have x because a is equal to zero. Moving on to the next term, we have one over uh, two factorial. This, this formula will be given to you on the formula sheet. f double prime at a is negative one over four. Perfect, and we have x squared in this case. Okay, and we'll just go ahead and quickly fill out the rest. And we have minus one over three factorial. Okay, three over eight times x cubed. Cool, and that is it. That's as far as we're gonna go here. Okay, and if we go ahead and simplify that, which will make our lives a little bit easier here, we have one plus one over two x, okay, minus one over eight x squared plus 1 over 16 x cubed. Perfect. Okay, so that is our Taylor series expansion for one 
root 1 plus x, and we have four terms here. So let's go ahead and start filling out our table, and this should start to make a little more sense to you, okay? So we have number of terms is one, so we're starting with the first term, okay? So because the first term is one, this is just gonna be one, and this is going to be one as well, all right, Fn. Epsilon a, with our approximate relative error percentage, okay? We won't have that, okay? Because we evaluate Ea by subtracting um, this Fn value by this Fn value, and because we don't have an Fn value here, uh, EA doesn't exist for the first entry. And we're not going to stop because we stop uh, evaluating, okay, when EA, uh, absolute value epsilon A, is less than epsilon S, okay? And uh, epsilon S is up here, but we don't have an epsilon A, so we're just going to continue. So we're going to continue on and we're going to take a look at the first two terms of the Taylor series, okay? So we're going to go ahead and write out the first two terms in this column here, one half X. Uh, for the approximate value of root 1.05, okay, which is what we call Fn, we're just gonna go ahead and plug in x, okay? So x in this case is, if we look at one plus x, and uh, we have root 1.05, so x must be 0.05, right? So let's go ahead and plug that in, 0.05, okay? And now, like I said in the previous, uh, just in the previous row when we were talking about that, we are going to find EA by subtracting, okay, this value here, and this is actually equal to, sorry, I didn't, didn't write this too big, but 1.025. So we're gonna go ahead and subtract 1.025 minus this co uh, column here, this row, and then we're gonna divide by, again by 1.025. Okay, and that will give us 2.439%. Okay, so now we need to go ahead and take a look at this value, and is it less than this value? Okay, that's the uh, that's the question here. So uh, we have 2.439%, and as we can see, 2.439 is larger than ES, uh, epsilon S, which is 0.05%. Okay, so we have to continue. And we just repeat the process. I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward, right? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and write the first three terms of our Taylor series expansion. And that's what I meant before when I said we didn't know how many derivatives to take, is if we keep on continuing uh, adding another term and writing it in this column, and we still don't get that epsilon a is less than epsilon s, we have to continue adding terms, okay? And uh, if we didn't take enough terms here, we're gonna have to go back, take another derivative, and, and rewrite the Taylor series formula, which you don't want to do in a test situation. So take just a couple extra derivatives than you think you might need, and that is the safest way to do it. So we have minus one over eight x squared, just writing these first three terms. We're gonna go ahead and plug in 0 0.05 for x, okay? One plus one half, 0 0.05, minus one over eight, 0 0.05 squared, okay? That is going to give us a value of 1.0, two, four, six, eight, seven, five. Okay, we're just gonna take a bunch of significant digits so we don't make a rounding error. And EA, okay, and if you remember from EA, we're going to go down to FN, uh, the FN column uh, one over here. We're going to take 1.0246875. We're gonna subtract it from uh, FN above it. Okay, minus 1.025 and we're gonna divide that all by this number again, okay, 1.0246875. And that is equal to a uh, percentage of negative 0 0.030497. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at this value and the absolute value of that and compare it to epsilon s, we're going to get that negative 0.030497, absolute value, okay, which is, 0 point, is actually, in fact, less than 0 0.05, which is epsilon s. So now we can go ahead and stop. So what does that mean? Well, you know, it, we know we have to stop, but what is our final answer? Okay, this isn't enough to get us any marks. Uh, we need to know, interpret what's going on. And uh, actually, fn is our correct value here, okay? So fn is the number that, that is our final answer, that is the uh, estimate of root 1.05, okay? To 
however many significant digits that we did, okay? So now that we stopped here, we know that we, uh, we have a, an answer that's accurate to at least three significant digits. So we can go ahead and say that, our, write, rewrite our final answer here, or write our final answer. We can say that root 1.05 is approximately equal to, we'll just say equal to, uh, we'll say approximately equal to, 1.024 So we can say that uh, at least three of the significant digits here are accurate. So we'll say with at with accuracy up to at least three significant figures. Okay, and if we go ahead and plug that into the calculator, just to show you, okay, if we have root 1.05 and we go ahead and plug that in, we're going to get a value of 1.02469. Okay, so 1.0246. Okay, so we're accurate up to uh, 1.0246, but we know for sure that we have at least three significant digit values that are accurate. Cool, so thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate the uh, the view here and you know let us know if you have any other questions about this and like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video